How many times have you heard the hype of a promising new startup only to watch it fade into obscurity or collapse completely just a few years later? Fraud does happen a lot in self-managed restaurants and coffee shops, becoming the major cause of their instant rise and fall. Let's talk what if. Let's say fraud happened in your own coffee house. Have you ever anticipated what to do about that? Plus, with the ownership of skills to manage their emotions? Well, in business, we recommend you to save your tears, adjust what has been failed, and move on better. This is a textbook case of what we call instant rise and fall. If you've ever wondered why some businesses grab onto their five minutes of fame only to vanish, while others stand the test of time, and why the exact same thing happens to musicians, you're in the right place. First, we'll dive into a fraud case from an IPO-worthy coffee shop chain that brought them to the bottom of the ocean. Then, how fraud can knock your business in a sweet manner, along with how to save your tears and get out from business failure like this very pop icon. We are Guma Channel, and today we'll be discussing everything about instant rise and fall. Learn from the Luckin Coffee Fraud Scandal In early 2020, it seemed like Luckin Coffee was on the fast track to success. I mean, they were considered competition by Starbucks. The company had more locations than Starbucks in mainland China and seemed set to take on the world, even opening on the US stock market. But suddenly, everything took a turn for the worse. In February 2021, the company filed for bankruptcy. What went wrong? Well, to start with, the discovery of fraud. Everything came crashing down during an accounting scandal. The firm had faked its sales data from 2019 to the tune of $310 million, exaggerating its revenue and understating its losses. China's Securities Regulatory Commission uncovered that about 40% of annual sales were in fact fake. And this was no innocent mistake, this was a calculated act. Luckin Coffee had to pay a settlement worth $180 million as a result, and Nasdaq halted trading on its stock, which had previously been one of China's few success stories in the US stock market. Shortly after that, the stock was delisted. The company's chief operating officer, Jian Lu, was blamed for the fraud. He was suspended along with his team when the news broke. Liu created false sales transactions by using a fake operations database and falsifying bank and accounting reports. As calculated as it was, his efforts weren't sophisticated enough to fool the authorities. So you see, not all that glitters is gold. Clearly, fake it till you make it is the wrong approach, at least when it comes to business. But it would be patronizing to tell you that all these cases of falsification are found out eventually. But the interesting part of the Luckin Coffee scandal is that it took so long for anyone to figure out what was really going on. Even when the news was revealed, many market analysts refused to believe that there could have been any fraudulent activities going on. It was only when Luckin finally admitted what had happened that everyone finally accepted it. Why? Luckin was becoming such a phenomenal success story that everyone wanted to rally around it. New chains were being opened in China every day, and investors around the world couldn't get enough of the stock. The only real red flag was that fraud risk is generally higher in China due to its rural history and rampant corruption, despite the president's efforts to clamp down. And unfortunately, major scandals like this are likely to spread further distrust among foreign investors into China. But let's turn it back around to you and your business, and play the long game. The tale of Luckin Coffee is a rather extreme one. You're probably not falsifying transactions for your business. At least, we hope you're not. But you may well be at risk of being taken in by a wolf in sheep's clothing. Do you really know what's going on behind the scenes in your company? To avoid the fallout of a massive scandal, it's best to err on the side of caution. You may think you know what a shady person looks like, but fraudsters have a way of hiding in plain sight.
the fraudster is sweetly knocking at your door. Our channel is focused on compliance issues, so if we told you that we're about to give you business advice from a movie about a successful fraudster, you'd probably call us crazy. Yet here we are, talking about Catch Me If You Can. Maybe we are a little mad. Who isn't at least a little bit after this past year we've had? But hear us out. We're definitely not advising you to start falsifying your records. Instead, we just want you to learn a thing or two about how to spot a fraudster like Frank Abagnale Jr. The protagonist of Catch Me If You Can is the real-life fraudster Frank Abagnale, who found himself in desperate need of money after his mother had an affair and his parents divorced. So Abagnale did what any desperate person would, he turned to scams. First he tested the waters with simple confidence scams, but eventually turning to grand schemes. Some of his most impressive scams include impersonating a French teacher at his school to get back at a bully and posing as an airline pilot to garner more attention and respect from people with power. He made millions of dollars throughout his career before eventually retiring to a quiet life in the Midwest with a career in bank forgery. Not bad for a runaway with no formal education or experience, eh? Here's the bad news. Fraudsters will do whatever it takes to pull off the impossible. With such an impressive, varied list of scams, it's only natural to wonder how on earth Abagnale pulled all this off. In a nutshell, it's all about confidence. Frank Abagnale had no advantage over anyone else. He was just some kid from the Bronx who set off on his own at 16. Yet he went on to fool people who were far more wealthy, powerful, and educated than him. He didn't manage this through sheer luck or coincidence though. Abagnale would obsessively study people he wanted to impersonate and took notice of every little thing about them, from how they spoke to how they dressed a true master of his art. Most of us use subtle clues to get a general feel of whether someone is being genuine or not. How many businesses hire someone without verifying the information on their resume is correct? You might be surprised. So what does this mean for you and your business? Expect the unexpected. Let the tale of Frank Abagnale serve as a warning. That capable new manager you just hired, or that impressive business owner that just pitched you? They might not be all they seem, and that's exactly why compliance is so crucial for business operations. In retrospect, elaborate scams and notorious fraudsters are clear as day, but when they're taking place, most people are completely blind to it. There's no need to get too paranoid, but it's certainly best to ensure you're doing everything you can to avoid fraud. If you want to avoid a breakup with shareholders and key team members, or being a one-hit wonder business, this is a good inspiration to turn a failure into a success story. So in case you fail, let's look at how you can spin your failures into success. Take a leaf out of Ariana Grande's book. You'd struggle to find an individual with a more tragic story. Grande suffered a terrorist attack the death of an ex-boyfriend, and the calling off of an engagement in a short span of time. But what did she do next? She went on to have an award-winning album, some of the biggest songs of the year, and become the most followed woman on Instagram. No big deal. There's a lesson here. Failures can be a blessing in disguise if we use them as an opportunity to learn and grow. For Ariana, that meant creating an album where she showed her vulnerable side. For your business, it could mean pivoting to a new product, trying a different style of marketing, or paying more attention to compliance. So, why do businesses rise and fall? 
Entrepreneurs are known for being single-minded and hopelessly optimistic visionaries who are prepared to do whatever it takes to get their idea off the ground. And that's great. Until it isn't. The qualities outlined above do a great job of catapulting a business to quick success. But when it comes down to the finer details needed to maintain that success, it can sometimes work against you. It takes more than just a vision and ambition to see a business through. The best business owners and managers can combine their emotions with logic so they can make the right decisions. They need both the passion for their idea and the attention to detail to make it a reality. Those that are unable to combine logic and emotion effectively often mess up on key details, such as compliance, resulting in failure. In a way, this works the same as romance. Two people may start off passionate about each other, but it will eventually fizzle out unless they come to grips with the day-to-day -day compliance of the relationship. But as we saw from Ariana, failure isn't always the end of the road. So, don't be a one-hit wonder. Turns out romance, business, and the music industry all have a lot in common. Who knew? Although it's reassuring to know you can always turn a failure into a success, the more attractive route is to avoid this dilemma altogether by staying on top of your compliance. We'll do our part by keeping you updated with business insights and make sure you're always one step ahead. And the next time you suspect something is just too good to be true, take a hint from Ariana and just say, Thank you, next. Thank you for listening to Gemma Consult. If you liked the show, make sure to subscribe right now so you're first to hear new episodes with new motivation on how to take your entrepreneurial dreams to the next level. We're here to help each other grow to new heights. If you know an entrepreneur who would benefit from the support of our community, please share the show with them. Thanks for listening.